Hello everyone, welcome back to Z, and today we bring another intriguing concept, Alien Alternative Biochemistry. Subscribe to our channel and follow us. A bias exists within astrobiology and the contemplation of extraterrestrial biochemistry. Simply put, this bias results from the fact that we have only ever witnessed our own brand of life. Although all life on Earth successfully adheres to a set of principles and chemistry based on carbon, this may also blind us to the possibility of life that operates differently than anything else on Earth. While there are certain justifications for this viewpoint, there are also arguments against it. Success is one reason to concentrate on our way of existence on Earth. Over 3.8 billion years have passed along a genetic line that spans from the beginning to the present. Additionally we observe no independent life on Earth, everything is of a single kind. Unobserved is a second abiogenesis, in which the Earth produced unrelated life for a second time. This could potentially be attributed to the highly probable circumstance in which any newly discovered biochemistry is promptly consumed or otherwise irretrievably disrupted by the pre-existing life on the planet. This is intriguing with regard to panspermia. There is a possibility that rocks regularly transport extraterrestrial life to Earth via meteorite transfer or interaction with another life-bearing entity in the solar system, assuming life exists in the solar system. Alternatively, panspermia could occur, in which interstellar life may survive long enough in a meteorite from another exoplanet to reach Earth. However, this scenario is highly improbable. However, regardless of the outcome, it is possible that the persistent life on Earth sterilizes whatever it comes into contact with immediately. With respect to this, Earth would be a self-sterilizing planet. However this raises the unsettling possibility that if panspermia does occur, it could deliver a superbug capable of eradicating life on Earth. Thankfully this does not appear to have ever occurred in the billions of years that life has existed on Earth, therefore, such an extinction event may be exceedingly rare or even unattainable. However, if it were feasible, it would be among the most heinous ways to genuinely sterilize a planet supporting life. It is possible that meteorites ejected from Earth have caused this effect on other planets in the solar system, including Europa, E. coli or another more potent representative of Earth may have once inhabited Europa long before the invention of spacecraft. However, it is also possible that there are additional instances of unrelated life on Earth that our microbial detection capabilities fail to detect. This is the biosphere of shadow, and it is truly astonishing how dependent our methods are on the existence of our kind of microbes in order to detect them. Consequently, shadow biospheres continue to be speculative yet feasible concepts, even in our present-day reality. Aerial life forms that deviate from our terrestrial way of life are frequently disregarded, primarily due to our lack of awareness regarding effective search strategies. This includes much-touted concepts such as silicon-based life rather than carbon, which date back decades. However, numerous other manifestations of this way of thinking exist. An inquiry that may be posed pertains to RNA and DNA. Those principles, on which we are working, are an excellent method for indefinitely storing and transmitting data, if you will, from one generation to the next. While changes and mutations do occur, life communicates through the use of RNA and DNA. However one might consider viruses and cells that lack these characteristics and rely on alternative biochemical signatures for functionality. However one of the challenges in answering the question is that we do not have a particularly solid definition of existence, at least on the most fundamental level. It is, according to one definition, any self-sustaining chemical system that is also capable of Darwinian evolution. Many have argued against that, and I am sure there are many more, but that is the working definition at this time. Although it is difficult for me to classify as non-living a microbe that is obviously alive but does not undergo evolution, this definition does possess the benefit of not confining itself to the biochemistry of our species of life, rather, it leaves the door open for the possibility of other life forms. This truly divides into a variety of distinct areas and possibilities. Other than that, alternative chirality is the most plausible. 
This is considerably oversimplified when compared to left-handed or right-handed biomolecules. Almost all forms of amino acids in terrestrial life are one, this is referred to as left-handed. Conversely, sugars exhibit a right-handed chemistry. However, it is possible to invert those and they should function in theory, however life on Earth is incompatible with them and cannot utilize them. However, life could easily conceive of a world in which the opposite holds true and our biochemistry would be incompatible. The course of events on Earth could have been determined by a mere 50 50th chance. If we were to observe opposite chirality in a microbe from Mars or Europa, this would provide conclusive evidence that the microbe is extraterrestrial and not the result of panspermia emanating from Earth. An alternative choice is to lead an arsenic lifestyle. A significant characteristic of terrestrial biology is its reliance on phosphorus. Although life is still composed of carbon, the biochemistry could potentially incorporate arsenic in place of phosphorus. Although arsenic is toxic to the majority of life on Earth, it is conceivable that life originated using it as a substitute. An alternative hypothesis is referred to as borane biochemistry. This is not possible on Earth because it is explosive in our atmosphere, however, it is possible to imagine other atmospheres in which it would be stable. This would be an uncommon form of biochemistry, but boron is not a common element and anything associated with it appears to be uncommon in the universe. Additionally, alternative solvents exist in which the chemistry of life can function. Although water is the selected medium, alternative options include ammonia. Additionally, there may be solvents in outer space, such as hydrogen sulfide and hydrogen fluoride, which appear to be less favorable chemical conditions for life as we know it. Liquid methane exists for life as we know it, and Titan serves as an illustration of this in the solar system. Existence on Titan would be facilitated by liquid hydrocarbons as solvents and operate at extremely low temperatures. It is plausible, but Titan requires substantial direct development to answer this question. However, life in molten magma, or silicon dioxide-based biochemistry, is arguably the most intriguing liquid. This silicon-based material would have an exceptionally long temperature life when magma is used as a solvent in biochemistry. That brings up an additional category of possible life forms, life composed entirely of an element other than carbon. Silicon is the most suitable candidate in this case due to the fact that, although its potential chemistry is not as diverse as that of carbon, it still possesses an immense number of possibilities. An additional anomaly in this context is sulfur, which possesses broad yet comparatively restricted potential as a substitute for carbon. Furthermore, there are certain metals that demonstrate intriguing chemical reactions with oxygen, however, the manner in which such life could acquire complexity remains elusive. It is noteworthy to mention XNA, or xenonucleic acids, as a potential substitute for RNA or DNA in terms of overall genetic structure, albeit with a slight modification. However, the most thought-provoking concepts pertain to plasmas, including dust suspended in plasmas that exhibit certain attributes of life and other such notions. However, this raises the fundamental inquiry of precisely what life consists of, and such phenomena may not meet the criteria for qualification regardless of the definition we adopt, should they materialize. Research however, that was published in September adds a new dimension to the question of existence without carbon. This process entails autocatalytic reactions. There exist a multitude of self-sustaining chemical reactions that potentially facilitate biological processes, albeit in an entirely dissimilar manner than that which has hitherto been postulated. Autocatalysis is vital to life on Earth, in other words, it generates molecules that promote the occurrence of the same reaction in the presence of the necessary components. A molecule promotes the development of another molecule that would not occur otherwise. Particularly evident in reproduction is this. At its most fundamental level, life promotes the formation of more life much like molecules, this process in which one cell divides into two may have been a crucial aspect of abiogenesis. But that was restricted to the field of organic chemistry. However it appears that autocatalytic reactions beyond the realm of organic chemistry are more prevalent than previously believed, as researchers have discovered 270 instances in the past literature spanning various environments that are notably distinct from those found on Earth. 
certain elements, including thorium and mercury, which are not normally associated with life on Earth, were even utilized. However, it is worth noting that several of these processes could only occur under extremely high pressures or extremely low temperatures. Elements that infrequently undergo chemical reactions demonstrated participation in a limited number of autocatalytic cycles. However, the majority of them were exceedingly straightforward, requiring only a handful of reactions to reach a halt in contrast to the phenomena observed in organic chemistry. Furthermore, numerous examples remain unverified, underscoring the substantial unfinished research in the field of chemistry. An intriguing side note is that the endeavor to discover alternative biochemistries through the utilization of this method may also contribute to the advancement of chemical computation, a domain akin to the uncharted space of computing with molecules. Once more, inherent biases make it difficult to imagine an alternate existence. It is all too frequently viewed through the lens of biology. Nevertheless, there have been instances in which such actions have become problematic. Antony van Leeuwenhoek, the progenitor of microbiology, serves as an exemplary case. Upon observing microorganisms through a microscope during the 1670s, he erroneously referred to them as small animals, a term that is no longer accurate. Although they are not giraffes, he proceeded based on his understanding at the time. When alien microorganisms are present, the impact is considerably more detrimental. Citing an anomalous microbial organism in a Martian rock under a microscope today might not immediately indicate that is precisely what it is. Upon observing a collection of precisely square metal cubes on the Martian surface, one might conclude that their existence as natural entities is highly improbable. Too peculiar, but it would certainly spark discussion. After it has been determined that their likelihood of being natural is low, one may proceed to postulate that they are, in some fashion, the result of life. However what exactly does this indicate? Are they technological products, or are they deposits created by an unidentified organism with no equivalent on Earth? Difficult to determine. It would be necessary to conduct a direct analysis of them, which could yield valuable insights. However, without observing their fabrication process, the inquiry into their origins or development would persist, potentially indefinitely. Although an exaggerated illustration, one of the greatest challenges of direct life detection experiments in environments such as the icy surface of Titan or the ocean of Europa is the inability to identify life that we do not recognize. It is possible that we do not know what to search for and can only speculate on possible approaches based on our conceptions of alternative biochemistry. In other words, even in their most basic manifestations, alien life might be considerably more alien than we presently believe. It might be even more detrimental in its technological and intricate manifestations. In the grand scheme of things, our way of living might even be the rarest. Alright, that is all for this video, thanks for watching everyone. What are your thoughts? Is there anything you like to say? Please tell us in the comment section below. And if you find this content valuable, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for consistent and comprehensive examinations of the peculiar, intriguing and uncharted facets of our magnificent universe.